So what up 2K fans, your boy Shake. Why read a 20 minute long courtside report when you can just turn on notifications, come check out my channel, cause I've already done it for you. I'm gonna be up on the news anyway, I ain't doing nothing else. So check your boy out, like and subscribe, let's get into it. So it's that time of year, developers like Mike Wang are now back into social media, addressing the community. We got past July, which is the fake news month, chock full of a bunch of leaks, wild assumptions, lies, and clickbait. But now we're in August, it's time for that real information. Let's see what Mike Wang, the gameplay director of NBA 2K23, had to say to the community. So we've got a lot to cover, let's go. Mike says that signature jumpers have attributes and rating requirements in 2K23. Whip examples are here. Make sure you check the available jumpers with the test build feature to make sure that you get the shot that you want before locking in your build. The cutoff for certain jump shot animations for smaller builds is 6'5 and below, for swings is 6'5 to 6'9, and for bigs is 6'10 and above. Definitely pause the video to see the rating requirements for some of these jump shots. As you can see, smalls only for Steph Curry, so that's 6'5 and shorter. You have to have a 96 mid or three point shot. The release height rating is a B. Release speed is a C. The timing impact is A plus. And defensive immunity is an A, which means you could probably make that kind of shot in the defender's face. Kyrie Irving, on the other hand, has an A-plus defensive immunity, so you probably can make his shot in front of a closing out defender a little bit more frequently. Kate Tovin asks, will both of your mid-range and three-point shot need to be at a 96 to unlock Steph's or Kyrie's shot or just one of them? And Mike says, either one, you don't need both. That's a very good point. You don't want to waste those attribute points on having a 96 mid and a 96 three just to get the Steph or Kyrie Irving or any of those jump shots. Tony Cash Money says, what about custom jump shots? Do they have requirements or just the signature jumpers? And Mike makes it clear the custom shot you create will generate attributes and a shot rating requirement based on the components you use to build the shot. So making jump shots this year is gonna be a lot deeper. One other thing he pointed out was that real player percentage will not be a valid option for online games in 2K23. So it's gonna take all of your own skill. I think the majority of you guys can appreciate that. Playoff Taco says, have any signature animations been changed like Jason Tatum's jump shot? And Mike says, a lot of signature jumpers have changed. It was the biggest content refresh in years. This means they put a lot of work into updating a majority of the shooters actual signature jumper this year. We've got a great question in from Ben. He says, will we be able to consistently shoot with a 70 or under three ball? And Mike says, it's hard to answer. There are a lot of factors, but if you're really good at timing your shot, are open and have the right badges, you can be serviceable, but you won't be reigning like last year. And he's referencing 2K22 because that was the easiest 2K to shoot in so far, especially with that sniper badge. Big homie Sellis says for this year's 2K, I don't know if I missed it, but is there still shot fatigue? So the lower the stamina, the lower your shot is. Also, what about meters versus no meter? You gave us different meters, but if the no shot meter still exists, people won't use it because of the boost. Mike says, yes, there's still shot fatigue. Your shot ratings get hit the lower your energy stamina meter gets. That's another good point for you ball handlers because if you're over dribbling, you're really gonna take a hit on your jump shot. He also says the no meter option will give you slightly larger shot windows and make it easier to green if you know your shot well. So no change there. Now Mike took the time to go deeper on the topic of shooting since it wasn't all the way explained in the courtside report. He says he's working on adding a new controller setting to let you customize where your ideal release point is in your shots. Early would be near takeoff or late closer to the wrist flick. Still working out the kinks, but it's gonna be fire. So that's a lot more to look forward to with customizing your jump shot in 2K23. I'm gonna reach out to some of my best shooting teammates so you guys can lean on me for those best jump shot videos. And for you post players, Mike says that shimmy fades and hooks are controlled by double throws too, which means double tapping the right stick left right or right left, and drop steps and post hop shots can be done by double throwing the pro stick in the same direction. Just want you guys to know that some of those animations are really fast and they're clutch as hell. So you can really green some amazing shots out of the post. And the last thing on shooting, Mike gave me a shout out and he said football throw full court heaves are back in just for you. Now I wanna make it clear, I make a lot of suggestions to 2K 
especially with regards to animations or previous animations that they took out of the game. So it's obvious they have a whole library of animations that were mocapped years ago that can be put back into the game. But only with your help, maybe throughout the year, we can get more suggestions and new ideas put into the game for the future. This was just one little thing. Shout out to Mike Wayne for jumping on that. Now this segment's gonna be all about dunking. Once again, here are the new dunking controls. And we have Jalen who asked a good question. Will the dunk meter make its way to current gen? And Mike says, yes, dunking controls are the same in both gens, but you can only do the physics-based controllable rim hangs in next gen. Keep in mind, guys, the dunk meter is to your advantage. Activating the meter is designed around you trying to expose the defender to practically embarrass him with a posterizer. Those kind of dunks take timing, which means it's going to require some skills. That's why they're calling it a skill dunk. There's still seven other ways you can dunk the ball without it, not if you include lobs and putbacks. So don't stress out about a dunk meter. You don't have to use it. It's just fun for the guys that have skills that know how to dunk really well. And remember, the higher your dunk rating, the larger the timing window will be. If you're on current gen, you gotta step your game up. Can't get too hyped about just running into the rim and holding square or X and praying for a posterizer. Ben Skinner asks, so the round dunk meter is gone? And Mike says the round meter is still used for alley-oops, but it's bigger and easier to read. All I know is when I played the game in Vegas, I ran a lot of pick and roll and threw a whole lot of lobs and they were very easy to time. The dunk meter felt more like a time press more than anything. Senior Drip says, so how every time I go up with a back scratcher, the shit gets blocked? And Mike says it's fixed. What he really means to say is that the higher your dunk rating, the harder it is for the defender to track the ball. Most blocked dunks are going to be met at the rim, not really on the way up. Here's where Mike drives that point home. He says driving dunk ratings dictates how easy it is to block dunk attempts. Flashy dunks boost your takeover meter faster than basic ones. So you're going to want to do more flashy dunks. Back scratchers, windmills, tomahawks, and other flashies are much harder to block in general. Not like 22 when all of those dunks were getting blocked and pretty much everybody turned those animations off. Ended up being a lot of money and time wasted for all those NBA players and dunkers who came in and mo those animations for no reason. We got Double R who says, the meter is unnecessary, but the functionality is great. You get to choose to try a dunk basically every time. That's a win. The meter itself is garbage and it's hard to see, but you can just time it off memory and based off the animation just like a jump shot. And Mike says skill dunks, down down and up down, they use your normal shot meter now by the way. I remember telling you guys that in my hands on experience video. Now more insight on dribbling. Not so Ed says, hey can you explain more on double throws to elaborate and paint a clear picture. And Mike says, for dribble moves, you quickly flick the right stick, let it go back to center and quickly flick it again. For shots, you flick the right stick, let it go back to center, then quickly move it and hold it. You can either double throw in the same direction twice or one way and then the opposite. So yeah, it's just gonna require some time in the lab. We're gonna all have to practice doing dribble moves all over again. Another great question from the community, is the dribbling system the same this year or is it different? Mike says the core of dribbling is still intact. The new pro stick gestures, double throws, just gives us the ability to add some new combo moves to the game. It will feel more familiar to you when transitioning from 22, but we'll find some new moves to add to your arsenal as you experiment. Malik asked the question, what happened to Mismatch Expert? Was it replaced with something or reworked into another badge? And Mike says that Mismatch Expert was moved into playmaking. It helps smaller ball handlers blow by taller defenders easier. So as you can see, it's still there, just no longer designed around shooting. And Mike answering the statement from Curve, they added a badge that is tight handles and quick chain in one, I believe. I may be wrong. And Mike validates his statement by saying Killer Combos is a new badge that basically encompasses the functionality of those badges. So yeah, Killer Combos is your new tight handles and quick chain, all in one. Now for you two ways and defenders. Good question from KD Trey. Did you fix AI defense? There was a whole segment on that in the courtside report. Feel free to read it if you want. But Mike answers this by saying the AI team worked hard on improving AI defensive rotations, transition, and pick and roll defense to name a few. They also adjust dynamically to scheme against high scorers. On ball defenders are less psychic and defend in a more human way. Question from Boomin who asks, is Intimidator still around? And Mike says Intimidator is gone. The equivalent for 2K23 is Anchor. For perimeter contest, there's a new challenger badge. So no more Intimidator, get used to Anchor. 
And if you guard the ball handler on the three-point line, you want to use the challenger badge. And to drive home his point about defense in 2K23, Mike makes this statement. Trust me, locks are solid. Maybe even a little too strong right now. We're still fine-tuning and we'll make sure we balance the builds as best we can. This sounds very similar to my hands-on experience video when I told you guys when I played in Vegas, the on-ball defense felt really good, especially the 1v1 interactions. If you lose that battle 1v1, you really do feel like you lost that battle. Not everything's about badges, you're still going to need some stick skills on defense. And finally, some various statements addressing the community. Mike says most, if not all, of the returning badges have been retuned or reworked in some way. If something was OP in 22, don't assume it will be again in 2K23 also. Some of the weaker badges were buffed also. In the courtside report, they said that there are 16 badges per attribute category. So that's 16 in finishing, shooting, playmaking, and defense slash rebounding. You get 8 in tier 1, 4 in tier 2, and 4 in tier 3. Tier 1 badges are the least powerful for your player, but also cost the least amount of badge points, and costs go up as you climb the tiers and acquire the more impactful badges, tier 3 badges being your more powerful badges. So basically some of your favorite badges in 2K22, if they were considered overpowered, they might now be in tier 1 or tier 2. If they're in tier 3, they're just going to require more badge points to even equip them. Here's a bombshell, Mike says, double takeovers are now in current gen. If you guys ask me, I don't have a problem with this because we've been dealing with double takeovers on next gen all year, no problem. Good question from Valdo. The timing on layups is so broken, at least for centers. I have a 99 close shot and can't hit anything but late on layups online. And to answer that, Mike says, we've made some changes to layup timing. You can make some really tough layups that you would miss with it off. And you won't blow wide open bunnies anymore even if your timing is bad. This is really interesting because I do plan on making a build that might not necessarily be a great dunker. And if I get to step on the defender, I want to finish left handed or right handed with a scoop layup. I might even turn on layup timing so I could green my fillets even if they contest it well. And for the final statement of this video, Mike says, Bullet passer is gone. Pass speeds are tied to the pass accuracy rating. So this is pretty huge. You can't just rely on an 85 pass rating and just equip a badge that lets you pass like the better passers out there. You're really gonna have to have high distinct attributes designed around those particular skills. That's why this year it might be wiser to specify what type of build you wanna make rather than trying to make a build that could do a little bit of everything. So that's it for the video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about custom shots, signature jumpers, Real player percentage being taken out of the game? What's your take on the news about defense? I'm not really here to hype you guys, I'm just here to bring the news. A lot of this stuff sounds pretty interesting to me. I'm always excited to play the next 2K regardless, and I'm always down if you're down. So let's blow up together, like and share the video, turn on notifications for more news updates on 2K23. It's your boy Shake, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.